Halloween, the uncomfortable truth. Let's start this up with a disclaimer if you want to call it that. This video is made for God-fearing men and women who believe there is good and evil. God and Satan and that physical actions have spiritual repercussions. No woke, LGBT whatever or political agendas, no fear-mongering or fight-picking, just a Bible-believing, God-fearing take on why Halloween is not something a follower of Christ should partake in. A legitimate question would be, what is Halloween? BibleInfo.com defines it as, and I quote, the word Halloween literally means the evening before All Hallows Day or All Saints Day, celebrated on November 1. Halloween is also the shortened name of All Halloween, All Hallows Evening and All Saints Eve, which is celebrated on October 31. The origin and meaning of Halloween are derived from ancient Celtic harvest festivals, but more recently we think of Halloween as a night filled with candy, trick-or-treating, pumpkins, ghosts and death." End quote. And therein lies the first reason for a Christian to steer clear. The ancient Celtic harvest festivals, specifically Samhain or Samhain, I don't know how to pronounce it, I am not Celtic, which is celebrated November 1st, which coincides with Halloween's October 31st, is an ungodly event. Samhain was marked by great gatherings and feasts, and when bur burial mounds were opened, which were seen as portals to the other world, while well, God teaches us in Leviticus 19 verse 31, and all scriptures are from the New International Version, do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritists, for you will be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God." End quote. Samhain is regularly associated with bonfires and sacrifices, and as Wikipedia puts it, special bonfires were lit, which deemed to have protective and cleansing powers like Beltine, Samhain was a liminal or threshold festival when the boundary between this world and the other world, other world blurred, making contact with the spirits or fairies more likely. Most scholars see them as remnants of pagan gods. As Samhain, they were appeased with offerings of food and drink to ensure the people and livestock survived the winter. The souls of dead kin were also thought to revisit their homes, seeking hospitality, and a place was set at the table for them during a meal. Exodus 20 verse 1 to 3 says clearly, And God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. The main reason why Christians were ever lured into celebrating such a holiday probably comes from the early days of missionaries working in Ireland, where these Druids, of course, did their thing. As BibleInfo.com says, however, instead of eradicating pagan practices such as Halloween or Samhain, the church used these holidays with a Christian twist to bring paganism and Christianity together making it easier for the local population to convert to the state religion. Wisdom with man is not always wisdom, wisdom with God, though, and in doing so, these missionaries have created traditions which leave space for the evil one to grab hold on. And as 1 Peter 5 verse 8 says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Even that which is seen as innocent for the children has a spiritual backstory. One of the ancient beliefs was that demons, witches and such roamed the earth on November 1st and could do as they pleased with whoever they pleased. And the only way to appease them would be by offering them things they liked, like sweets or food, or to disguise themselves as something scary and join said witches and demons in prowling around. God is clear when he says we must keep away from all evil for our own good. 1 Thessalonians 5.22 Abstain from all appearances of evil. The God-fearing man or woman is tasked with being God's representative on earth, drawing others to him 
and keeping away from evil so as to not be corrupted themselves. Philippians 4, 8, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Now tell me, how do you glorify God when celebrating a holiday based on evil demons, witches and sorcery and still celebrates these things to this day? From trick-or-treating to mixing with the spirits and demons, it all goes against what God warns us about. As always, the choice to partake in this event or not is in your own hands. But now hopefully you have something to think about. God bless.